I think this new angle is going to work. Wait, I gotta start speaking when I sit down. <sighs> I think this new angle is going to work. We don't have to um, sit in each other's laps either. <laughs> no, dog, you cannot sit in my lap. Go lie down. Get out of here. Go on, doggies. Go on now. Spruce. Yeah. That's a neat trick. When I first figured it out, I felt like my mind is blown. <laughs> you can get incense off a tree. <laughs> and, and all that annoying sticky resin that sticks to your clothes and sticks to your deck and sticks to your car is actually a really awesome incense. I'm going to put some sandalwood on now. This, I've got two sandalwoods. One is a resin, but this one is a powder, and it's the best ever. And it'll burn on its own. It's basically sawdust, sandalwood sawdust. And it'll even burn on its own. So if I'm having trouble getting the resin to burn, I add some of this. Mm, it's my favorite smell from the whole world. My favorite wood. I even have a fan. Maybe two, two sandalwood fans? One sandalwood fan. It's lost its aroma, but for the longest time it smelled like that. And I just do this and be like, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use it to fan some of that over here. Why? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's nice. I like sandalwood too. <coughs> mm -hmm. I also have sandalwood uh, essential oil that I use for just fragrance. Never had an objection from anybody, no matter how freckled. Want to do your divination today? Sure, I'll see what happens. See if it comes out the same as yesterday. Oh. Or something similar or something. It won't. Yes, it did. <laughs> In this case, um, oh, you've got a, ba a dancer? Wishes and creation in either hand, but they're reversed. Magic is at the heart of it, and it's all a dream. Someone is using wishes and creativity to do, to do ill. Weaving magic, a dream, a, to dance around. Someone's being dishonest with you. But not just simply dishonest, creatively, largely dishonest, like a, a, a giant illusionist drawing a, a dream around you. So someone's trying to paint uh, an imaginary landscape around you and fool you and draw you into using using your wishes and your creativity to build it. And they are the magician doing it. That's how it's done. Hmm. That's how I do it. I've been having a lot of fun with these. I, I did a couple of just nothing ones for the camera, for the vlog. I'm, it's, I, I love it. Okay, I'll do one and you, you can read it. If you can't read the word, it's not part of the... It's an empty. I know. I was just seeing what that one was. Oh, okay. Okay, what have I got? And yeah, the picture would be this way. you could make out of it. <coughs> I just see five stones. Mm. They're clearly five stones. They're not they're in a pattern that shows that they're five stones. That might be relevant too. Mm -hmm. Am I too stoned? <laughs> too stoned. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
strength is upside down, dreams and create are facing the same direction. That's interesting. Oh, that is trippy tasting. I taste the lychee in that tea. We're That's what I'm tasting. Lychee black it. tea. I can taste the lychee. It took me a while to realize what was different. Yeah, that's what I was. I didn't know what it was because I, I couldn't remember what you said, what kind of tea we were having. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what kind of tea is this again? Tastes mm -hmm. good. <laughs> hmm. Huh. Strength is sideways. I think we're focusing too much on the words again. It's not a linguistic puzzle, it's a graphic one. What's the picture? And the words are just colors in it. Picture. Well, that's how you read tea leaves, by the way. You see pictures in them. Uh -huh. I just see the it's five. Cross. That's a picture then. That's an X. yeah. Isn't that a ten in Roman numerals? Yeah. See, I also see a rabbit. And I see a person reaching to the sky. Back leg, front leg, body, head, arms, um, or dancing, or begging, or kneeling. Could be kneeling. Uh, like I said, it could be a bunny. I also see an X. I also see um, groups, you know, two together, one alone, two trailing. These could be children. This could be the, the questioner. This could be a relationship. This, I don't have kids, so I don't know. But that's what I mean by see the picture. Mm. Like a constellation of stars. You may not be a graphical thinker anyway. No, I am. Mm, okay. I am. I just didn't... You just need to slip your head there. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of a sideways boop. Mm -hmm. I'll think like this now. Yeah. Reminds me of Orion when you said constellations. Mm. It does. It looks like... And it might even be about Orion. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, this would be his belt and that's where the strength is. Mmm. I like it. See, that's the part that's the diviner's art that you access you into your intuition. Mm. And it's from that intuition, you go, know, okay, you know, you, you run the scenarios through your head and one of them shines like bright as Orion's belt. And then you run from there and you start speaking about it. You know, I see this in it and, and then it, you chase it and it gives you all of the little things and then the person sits back and goes, holy shit, that's relevant. And then you're like, good, pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, there's two ways to do divining. <clears throat> One way is to try and be very personal and get it right. The other way is to learn lots and lots of generalized phrases, like the horoscopes in the newspaper. They give a mixture of hope and dread and apply to just about everybody. Yep. Now, the former, that they do. The former will endear you to friends. The latter will make you rich. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the tarot readers, like most of the psychic readers out there are doing the latter. They, they, they know how to tease out of you responses that help direct them into a better direction so that they can personalize the message. But they start with a very generalized message that applies to anybody and watch for micro expressions from you to tell them what direction to take it. Me? I fall, I chase, I chase an imaginary rabbit made of thought, who dodges like a rabbit would dodge, and I sort of have to keep a close eye. It's like watching for a cat, uh, an ocelot in the in Minecraft. It's like, where'd that little fucker go? And then when I'm done, I hope I got it right, and. Definitely more than three quarters of the people I read for connect. So, 
that tells me that, you know, like some, and the thing is, there are sometimes, when I used to do the psychic fairs, people would sit down at my table, and I knew immediately that they weren't there to be read, they were there to prove me wrong. And I would read that. I, I would include that in my reading. And win over some of them. You know? But it wasn't long before my table stopped. Like my table never got popular, and it wasn't long before I stopped getting people entirely, because I wasn't telling people what they wanted to hear. I was telling people what the card said, what my psychic intuition said. People don't like that. They don't want to know. So you already know everything there is to know anywhere in the whole universe. All knowledge currently owned by humanity and animal kind is accessible like a great big Google in the sky. That's what God is. It's like a, this great, that's part of what God is, is this great connected internet of mind that knows everything that can be known. And from it, can extrapolate more things. So if you want to know something about your future, the knowledge is probably available. But that would be like looking at the back of the book when you're doing a crossword puzzle and just grabbing your answers. So we don't do that. And the, the, the spiritual part of our mind stops us from accessing that knowledge for that very reason. What the heck is the point of being here if not to live here. I've read the ending of books, though, though, and still read the book to find out how they got to that ending. So there have been times where yeah. I'm, you know, I'll read the not beginning, me. and then I get curious and I'll read the end. And then my next thought is, how the hell do they get to that? Okay, now I've got to read the book to figure that out. Mm. So it doesn't ruin the book for me in some cases. Some cases, like, I don't do it all the time, but I have done it. So I can read a book. Well, to it. I, I get that when I, if I read a book multiple times. I do know the book. Now I'm reading the subtleties in it. But um, life isn't like that. If you already... I mean, some people, some people can know the path of their life. Their purpose here is not to experience that raw, but to experience it the way you would as a person who already knows. Like Cassandra, for instance. She's, um, she was the, the, a princess in Troy during the Helen of Troy thing. When... Uh, King Priam, I think it was, married Helen, and uh, Jason, I think it was, I forget, or Achilles. One of those guys went to steal her. He, he went and visited and stole her away, eloped with her. Um, Cassand, and then they came back and they sacked the city using the Trojan horse to get, well, anyways, Cassandra was a princess in that city who was cursed with the, with she she was physically blind and she had second sight and her curse was that she will never be believed and so she went to everybody to warn them about the trojan horse she saw the fall of the city in her visions she knew that it came from something she didn't know it was the trojan horse but she understood that a package was going to be delivered that would bring the doom and ruin of, of us all and cause the fall of the city she saw it in her mind's eye and Nobody believed her. So they went ahead and brought the gift in anyway. And for all we know, perhaps, because that annoying woman that wouldn't shut up made such a big deal out of it, maybe they even went, say, we'll prove it. I don't care. Bring it in here. You know? So she, she was somebody who knew the course of her life and had to live it anyway. That was her experience here. And then you have some who their experience here is to be bewildered continuously by a world they don't understand. That's their experience. They are a person who's going through life in that state. Because that's what... The, every life that can be lived must be lived. Somebody has to experience it. And that somebody is whatever drop of essence came from God in the first place. Because you're only that much of a somebody. I me would be somebody else if I, me, was born that somebody else. I would be that somebody else. And that somebody else was born and is themselves. And it's like, you could be, oh, I wish, I wish my hair was, was, you know, curly. I wish I was curly redhead. Like, well, you know, somewhere out there, a curly redhead wished to be a curly redhead and became one. 
and I'm somebody who wished to have long, straight blonde hair, and I have. And I became that person so thoroughly that I don't remember the wish or the time before it. Maybe that's happening. Maybe we're all switching consciousness and bodies 50,000 times a year. But because it comes with its own set of memories and experiences, we don't remember the wish and the switch. <laughs> and so maybe we wished ourselves into the state that we're in. You know, I wished one day to be a person, to be this person, with all of the negativity and the positivity. I wished for this. And so that's, for me, that's a way of being more accepting of the things that don't please me in life. So in, in, with, with psychic readings, that information is accessible to all of us. A lot of us have never learned to listen, and I think it's best learned in youth. But it seems a lot of old people pick up the trick, too. I've noticed a lot of old people seem to learn to hear it. And it might be as simple as sitting under trees more. You know, could be. Or maybe you've got to meditate. I don't know. I've done all of the above. <laughs> you name it, I've done it. <clears throat> and I also said as a child that I wasn't going to let them hammer psychic abilities out of me. It, it was late 60s and the early 70s. Being psychic was a big fad. So as a small child, I heard about it. Everybody was talking about being psychic, about the sixth sense, extrasensory perceptions, ESP, and, and I'm like, oh, that's a thing. But how come most people don't have it? I mean, I think I have it. Let me try. And I'm like, you know, I'm pretty sure I got it. How come everybody doesn't have it? And I went, because if I told anybody I was doing talking to animals and trees and stuff, they'd make my life hell. So people drive it out of you. You stop doing it so that because you can't tell anybody about it. If you can't tell anybody about it, why bother? Because a human being doesn't exist outside of what people think of him. Kind of. And for most people, that seems to be true. Their, their who they are is entirely based on what other people see. If I did that, I'd be dead for sure. <laughs> These days, it's much better. People are much nicer to me. I don't know why I had to take cancer. Maybe it just took that to finish making me nice and likable. <laughs> Some questions are too painful to ask. Oh, look, we're out of smellies. It's time to put some more. Do you want myrrh or benzoin? Myrrh. All righty. See, I, I needed a box for it, so I, I chose one of my, my most Christmas Eve box I had. I, I just thought, you know, gold and, and red. And myrrh is a red a red and gold resin, see? Mm -hmm. See how it, it looks just like that stuff you were picking off the spruce tree? More or less. It looks more like rocks and that more and more like bubbles. Yeah, that's because these have been smashed and and oh. made and stuff and they come from a different environment. Like if you break those up. Yeah. Okay. Very similar. Uh, same goes with oh yeah, there's just almost a little bit too much in here. I'll show you the benzoin. It's, it's another resin one. This one's a different color. And it's been well cracked up. Like, people sit there and crush it down, you know, to make it less chunky. There's a chunk. Oh, that's because it's heated up and got mashed together. But yeah, you could put it in a mortar and pestle and you could grind it down. But grind it down cold and grind it down with swift strikes, not slow grinds because it'll turn into a mucky mess. It's like that cornstarch slime that you make, but if you hit it hard it cracks, and if you hit it slow it gives way. I was giving a hint of the stink. Is there something wrong with the device? A 
tool, please give to me a tool. That tool. You're such a tool. Oh, geez, I just broke something. That's too bad. It's a piece of plastic off the dog organizer. <laughs> it's from the 80s, so, you know, it's getting brittle. Uh, old people and their old crap, eh? I'm an old lady! <laughs> to be an old man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Start their burn now. Yeah. yeah, I can smell it now. Yeah, my coal's almost almost done. Excuse me, done. What's going on? Oh there, that's the smell. It's one of my favorites. It's got a very high high note flavor smell to it. I don't know why, but I, I think of I, I, I think of scents as notes, as as you know, like bass notes and treble notes and soprano notes and all that. And this one's got a lot of high notes in it. Each scent is a symphony of individual notes. Or chord, perhaps. <coughs> I'm gonna just let the uh, tea leaves fall into the cup. I can read them later. Yeah, that's why I, I gave up on psychic readings. I just wasn't making any money at it, and I just started to feel embarrassed sitting at an empty table, as well as I had to spend money to get that table. And then I tried a few, uh, a few bookings as a psychic at a birthday party kind of thing, and that was when I realized this isn't what people are coming to psychics for. They're not coming for the truth. They're coming for the lie. And I'm not the right person to do that, so. Put away my cards. I didn't really need them for me anymore because I realized that every time I sat down to the cards, I wanted the cards to tell me I was wrong about what I already knew. And I just kept confirming it. I'd be like, you know, Tell me this boyfriend's not going to leave me. I get, like, death. The tower. And, you know, change on the horizon. And broken hearts. And it's like, oh, fuck. You know? <laughs> so, like, if, if you already know the answer to the question, you don't go to the cards to ask them to tell you you're wrong. You bury your head in the sand or don't, but... <coughs> You don't expect the cards to tell you you're wrong when you already know something. And that was when I gave up on it. But, but I like this divination because it's very simple. It's, it's just a simple, quick guidance. It's not a, it's not a complicated thing. And, and it could be the start of a complicated conversation if someone who basically needs counseling. Which is what I'm loving about it. It's like a conversation piece. But it's also just a fun party trick, too. Like, it, it would be easy to, to turn it into, I see, I see a man who's got wish magic in his hands, magic in his heart. He's creative, he's strong, and he's a dreamer, and he's coming into your life, you know? Because like, everybody under the age of 35, at least, wants to know who their next beau is going to be, unless they're happily married. So you can always rely on giving somebody a sense that they're going to meet something amazing. It doesn't matter if you're right because you give them a long enough timeline they've forgotten. If they meet someone, then they go, see, the psychic predicted it. <laughs> the one time I got mine, what, what was it? I know I've had my picture taken to, for the aura, the aura pictures. I remember that. That was cool. But there was some other person that we saw at the exhibition. My mom and I went, some psychic or something. And I remember she told me I was going to go on a journey, and it was going to be a really hard journey. Oh, and this is a... And that I shouldn't back off from it. I should embrace it and go for it. And for the longest time, I took her literally like, a journey? Where am I going to go? And mm. now I realize what she was talking about, my transgender journey, and that I shouldn't back off from it, that I should embrace it and go for it. 
It's just taken me 20 years to figure out what the hell this woman was really telling me. <laughs> That's sometimes, <clears throat> yeah, a true, a, a, it can be that way. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why you don't have to worry about it. If you're lying or you're making shit up or you're keeping it frivolous, you really don't have to worry about it, you know. Um, for me, though, it's, it's not a vehicle for income. It's a vehicle for, it, it's a way to counsel. It's a vehicle for counseling. <laughs> and, you know, I'd, I'd look forward to someday that's being hilarious. able to sit in my bus in various places, meeting various people and giving them readings. Mm -hmm. The sugar bear, by the way, do you have one already or do you want one? You know what it is? I do and I have one. You don't need it? Or do you want two? The one I have, I haven't used it in a long time. Now I'm reminded I have it and I could use it. You must have remembered I bought brown sugar yesterday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw the bear sitting in the drawer and I thought, I don't know if Tom has a sugar bear, and we stopped using brown sugar, so I'll give it to Tom. A sugar bear is a ceramic device that you soak, then you dry off so that it's impregnated with water but not dripping, and you throw it in with your brown sugar to keep it from getting hard and crusty. It's clay, isn't it? Yep. Terracotta. Mm -hmm. 